Hello friends, this video on garbage in garbage out part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. And nothing really worked out well. So what do you think can we do with the garbage? How should we handle the garbage so that the environment doesn't get dirty? So that it doesn't harm us in any way because it is a very obvious thing that there would be waste materials in the house. Because if a fruit is rotten, we cannot eat the rotten fruit. So we need to throw it. Similarly, let's say uh, when you have used up something, for example, a plant, the leaves of the plant have dried up. So we are not going to do anything with the dry leaves. So we need to throw them. You think of uh, the tea leaves. So once the tea is prepared, we can't do anything with the tea leaves. So again, we throw them. So all of these wastes will be produced in our houses but how should we handle them how should how can we smartly handle them so that's what we will discuss now so the first thing that we should understand is waste segregation now the moment so many so so many different types of wastes are being produced in our houses we have electronic waste we have vegetable waste we have sanitary waste so many different types of wastes are being produced in our houses so we have to segregate them. Segregate means to separate them. So we have to separate them in different groups. So first, so we will separate the entire garbage into two categories. Useful garbage. Now, you might say that garbage in itself is the waste. So how can a waste be useful? Now sometimes some of the waste materials can be reused can be recycled that means they can be used in some different way let's let me give you a simple example so let's think of so let me take an example so let's think of the tea leaves so when we prepare tea what do we do we filter the tea and the tea leaves are left over now we do not consume we do not eat the tea leaves in any form so what do we do with those tea leaves we generally throw them in the dustbin and then that becomes a part of the garbage. Now when you look at those tea leaves, the same tea leaves which is a waste from our kitchen could be used in some other way. So the same tea leaves if you put into the soil of the rose plant, it can act as a manure. It can actually provide nutrients to the rose plant and the plant would flourish in a better way, it will give bigger flowers. Just, in fact, you would have seen this, uh, that a lot of ladies or a lot of people at their, in their gardens, they follow the same practice. They keep, the, they store the tea leaves and then they put it into the soil of the plants because it provides nutrients to the plants for their better growth. So the tea leaves was a part of the garbage because it was not needed by us. But we can use the same tea leaves for some other purpose. So this type of garbage would be useful garbage. So when you look at the garbage, the garbage contains a hell lot of different things. It, it could have toys, it could have electronic waste, sanitary wastes, vegetable wastes and whatnot. Now out of so many variety of things, a lot of things are such which can be reused by some alterations or which can be recycled that is the same thing can be recycled to form something else and that something else can be useful so some of the examples of useful garbage are dead plants plant wastes animal wastes paper wastes so all these things can be reused so they are useful garbage on the other hand we also have non-useful garbage which cannot be reused the exam best example could be plastics. However, certain variety of plastics these days can be recycled, but most of the plastics cannot be recycled. So for plastics, they, I mean, you might use one plastic bottle a couple of times until and unless it really becomes like waste for you. But once it becomes waste, then it cannot be used for any other purpose. So that means plastics would be a part of non-useful garbage. So the first thing that we need to understand is, so when we throw all our garbage, make sure that we separate the useful and the non-useful garbage because whatever is useful garbage, we can at least utilize them in that way. So at least our garbage got reduced from whatever we had, maybe 10 dustbins to maybe 3 dustbins. So at least we could reduce some amount of garbage. 
and when we talk about useful garbage it can have uh, plant animal waste it can have paper waste now papers can be used to make a lot of things like paper bags it can be recycled to get many useful products so that's what we will see gradually in the later sections now when we talk about these wastes broadly wastes can be classified into two types biodegradable wastes and non biodegradable wastes so what are biodegradable wastes so these are those wastes that can be degraded to simpler harmless form that means these wastes they can be they they are naturally broken down into a simple form and that simple form is also harmless to the environment so they are called biodegradable waste now you might say that who will break down these wastes into simpler form now this entire process happens in nature so it happens naturally with the help of some microorganisms so there are some tiny organisms which help in this process of decomposition so we call this process as decomposition that is something is getting decomposed is getting broken down into simpler harmless forms so this decomposition is done by microorganisms tiny organisms so examples of biodegradable wastes are paper wastes cow dung excreta agricultural wastes mostly the husk fiber etc wood all of these are examples of biodegradable wastes so now when you look into it, the dustbin of your house you will see that half of the things are biodegradable wastes in fact most of the things would be biodegradable wastes that means those wastes can be degraded into some harmless form now if we know that it can be converted into harmless form that means those wastes will not add on i mean they will not get added to the environment polluting it because they will get converted into some harmless form on the other hand non biodegradable wastes are those which cannot be degraded into simple harmless form so they will remain as it is so there in for most of the biodegradable wastes either their decomposition is not possible that is their breakdown is not at all possible or the breakdown process is extremely slow so that means for breaking those substances down it might takes decades and decades so again that is also of no use because the wastes are, will remain uh, dumped in the environment for 20 30 40 50 years so it, it is almost like not breaking down at all so examples of these kind of wastes could be plastics pesticides ddt industrial wastes metallic wastes so that is why uh, a lot of people often say that we should reduce the use of plastics because the more plastics we use the more plastics we throw and the more plastics we throw the more non biodegradable wastes we add to the environment so we should or from our end so with this you might have got a, an idea that when we talk about non biodegradable wastes there and there is no way which can get the environment rid of these non biodegradable wastes because nothing can break them break them down into any harmless form so they will always remain dumped in the environment at some other other corner so from our end what we can do is we can try to reduce the non biodegradable wastes so if the amount of non biodegradable wastes is less at least the harm that is being caused to the environment is also less right okay so now that we know that okay waste segregation is one important thing that we should do from our end now normally what happens to the garbage in our locality so we all uh, collect our the garbage of our homes in our dustbins and then what do we do with the dustbins we throw the dustbin or we keep the dustbin outside our houses and then what happens to the garbage from the neighborhood so the municipality who, which is in control of taking care of a particular locality they their people come and they collect and di disposes the municipal solid waste so their job is to collect the waste from that entire locality you would have often seen big trucks coming up who will pick up the dustbins from not the dustbins but the garbage in the dustbin they'll pick up all the garbage from the entire locality and then they'll go and dispose the municipal waste that entire waste of that locality at a place so where do they dispose so much of waste because can you imagine from one house itself we have some uh, two three dustbins every day in fact maybe more then when you think of the 
waste that is coming out of the entire locality how much garbage is that so what what is those municipal people doing with so much of garbage how are they disposing it and where are they disposing it so that's the question so that's what we will see in the next few sections that how do we handle each of these wastes whether it is a biodegradable waste or it is a non biodegradable waste thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again